Hey everyone, Scott here from Carton Cloud. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through the product setup of Replenishment. So taking a look at this product that I've already got established in the system, you'll see on the right hand side here, I've got conversions at a carton, a tier and a pallet. And now that I have Replenishment enabled within my account, I've got a new tab here called Replenishment. So if we take a look at that, you'll notice initially Replenishment is inactive for all products. Now to make them active, it's as simple as changing this to yes. And a whole suite of settings will become exposed. Now, like we talked about in the last video, we have the replenishment report logic that we looked at at the organization level. But at a product level, we can change what we set at that organization level. By default, we'll inherit what we set there, but we do have the option to potentially do change it to default here, or more likely you might do the overstock from sale order demand for those particular products that you're constantly having to replenish to make sure you have enough at the pick face to fulfill the open orders. Cool, so moving on, on the left hand side of the screen here, we've got the replenishment quantity configuration. Now you'll notice something here. I haven't put in any values yet, but Carton Cloud has gone and entered some predetermined values um, if I leave those fields blank. Now what's that? what that's doing is it's taking 50% of my highest unit of measure and making that my minimum. So if I refer back to my details tab, you'll notice my highest conversion is a pallet and it's 100 cartons to a pallet. So my minimum trigger by leaving it blank is going to be 50 cartons. Now, conversely, my maximum is just my highest unit of measure. So just equals a straight full pallet. And it's designed to allow you to turn on replenishment and have to do some pretty minimal setup in order to have it start working. Um, obviously, replenishment is one of those things that it will take a little bit of time to set up. So this is all designed to try and make the, the transition from not doing replenishment to doing replenishment a little bit easier. So I can override um, my assumed minimum by potentially saying, you know, 20 cartons but I do have a drop down to specify different units of measure. Because I'm looking at the product level, I'm always referring back to the measurement conversions on the right hand side of the details tab. So jumping back now, I might specify for this particular product that my minimum is 20. And my maximum, I'm happy with one pallet, so I can choose to leave it blank, or I can go and specify it if I want to. Now the replenishment type, uh, initially what it's set to is two max quantity. What that means is that when you hit the minimum, Carton Cloud will go and specify the exact amount you need to bring it back up to the maximum quantity threshold. What that means is potentially if you, when you're picking a few open cartons, it may say we want you to pick, you know, 15 full cartons and three units. Um, in my example, I don't have that. Um, so if the replenishment was to trip at say 20 cartons exactly, it would tell me to go and replenish 80 to bring it back up to a full pallet. But I do have some other options. Now the next option is units of measure lots defined. Now what that means is we want to replenish in multiples of. So using the same example that I did before when you pick and when you open cartons and pick loose product, you might say I want to replenish in multiples of one carton to avoid that situation that when you're replenishing, you have to open cartons and grab loose units just to bring it up to the exact amount to make um, that maximum quantity. In my example, I could say I want to replenish in multiples of, of a tier. So I want to just be able to take full tiers off my pallet and, and go on at top those up to my pick face locations. The third option is exact quantity defined. Now this is useful when I trip 
my minimum. So again, let's say that that location had run down to 18. Regardless of, of what it's what the minimum is, I just want to replenish a full pallet every time. So if I have to replenish this product, I simply just want to go and find a full pallet within my warehouse and go and replenish it into the pick face. On the right hand side here is what locations are considered my pick face for this particular product. Now, if I type in a location, all of these options here are considered pick face locations within my warehouse. So I've gone and I've changed all those efficiencies within the platform uh, to go and change all of the locations to be pick faces. If a location is not showing in this list, but it does exist in Carton Cloud, it simply means that you haven't changed the efficiencies to anything over 21. Cool, I'm just gonna change this to max quantity here. Now you'll see the option to add more. Um, so you can obviously create uh, multiple pick face locations for a single product and each one of them will be treated individually with the same minimum and maximum triggers. Similarly, uh, to the left hand side, if we leave it blank, it will go and look at what pick face locations this product is currently held in and use those or the last pick face location we saw it transact through. Um, and again, that's all in keeping with you being able to turn it on and have to do pretty minimal setup to get things going within the application. I'm just going to return that pick face back to the one that we were talking about. So further down the page, we have advanced replenishment configuration. Now, again, at the organization level settings, we were talking about, we could tell the system to not take more than 50% of a pallet. But now because we're within a specific product, the system now knows the units of measure that go along with that product. So the difference is at an organization level, we don't know that yet. So we can only talk about in terms of a percentage. So you could set a high level general rule across your warehouse, but then at an individual product level, you might say, in my example, anything more than a single tier, go and take it from the, from the bulk area, because I don't want um, just a single pick to be taking full tiers at a time, because it'll force me to replenish far too often. Now, pick face custom field restrictions. Now, obviously we can set up um, custom fields such as expiry dates and batch numbers and things like that. And what this does is it limits how many of a single expiry date uh, can be in there. So, so what I mean is um, it will make sure that that pick face location is only a single expiry date being the oldest because it will always keep uh, adhering to your stock selection methods that you've configured against the product. And it will make sure you're not getting pick faces with mixed expiry dates. So it's going to make sure that that uh, location is just a single expiry date. What that will mean though, is that if you only have a single expiry date, it's the last pallet of that expiry date, the pick face will run all the way down to zero not 20 because you've told it that you don't want to mix the pick faces with multiple expiry dates. I can do the same thing and configure it with a batch number as well. And it will operate the same way. It will operate and make sure that you've got no mixed expiry dates and batch numbers within the same location. So super powerful when you're trying to be strict in terms of your stock selection and making sure that, you know, your older stock is constantly going out the door first. Um, but it does have implications in terms of what's happening up the top. Now, obviously we can set all of those values manually, uh, but it's quite a bit of work to go and do that. So what we've done navigating back to the main product screen under the more option with replenishment enabled, you've now got export replenishment settings and import replenishment settings. So if I export that out again, we get the banner notifying us that it's being done as a background task. So it will be up in the bell. We download that file and I will drag that across for you so you can see. 
and here we are here. Now, very similar to our, um, our product master file that we use to import and export from the system. So as uh, from left to right, we've got our ID column. Now again, uh, when I'm making an edit to an existing record, I gotta make sure I leave the ID within that column. But you'll see it comes pre-filtered now, so we can filter by a specific customer. Um, we've got the product name, the product code, and whether replenishment is active, yes or no. Now, obviously by turning this on to yes, I could potentially leave the rest blank because remember, I've already uh, shown you that there's some settings that we inherit by leaving them blank. But you can go across, so you'll see that the one that I specified a minimum trigger of 20 and the unit of measure of carton, and I've done the same with the maximum and the unit of measure. I can change the replenishment type, how we're doing the replenishment in terms of what quantity is defined um, and the warehouse locations. So you'll see that all of those settings that we've just talked about are all here on this file. So you simply make the changes to that file, you would save it and you come back to Carton Cloud more and import replenishment settings. Um, and it's all designed just to help you get that initial setup done quickly. Uh, obviously, when you're doing this the first time, there's a fair amount of setup. So we've just tried to make that as easy as possible to get that going. Thanks very much.